there are a few hands that are up for today so i'm going to take uh, questions that um, that some of you have uh, the first um, hand that was up is ajinkya ajinkya please go ahead so you stated that uh, the lamina disintegrates to form the nucleoporin right mm -hmm. no the lamina is the lamina right the nucleoporin is the nuclear pore complex so okay. that breaks up separately um, you know the lamina obviously breaks up separately um, as i said see some of this mechanism like where does individual components go sit we are still figuring out right so the lamina what happens to the lamina as it breaks up does it again get just distribute in the cell and at some point of time reassemble um, we we don't completely know at this point of time but lamina and nucleoporins are not the same thing that's what yeah, yeah. Uh, so my question is that uh, you said you also said that nucleoporins migrate to different parts of the um, endoplasmic yeah. reticulum right yes, yes. so what is is there any significance to that uh, phenomena so the see the nucleoporins are integrated in the membrane the membrane uh, nuclear membrane is connected to the er um, a lot of the distinction between the nuclear membrane and the er membrane is lost during mitosis right so it could still be part of a membrane in the pieces of the nuclear pore complex um, and um, now it could be in a region that otherwise would have been called the er right um, so a lot of um, the distinction that exists between many of these structures um, is kind of altered during cell division and 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 then reacquired as the cell you know reassembles so this may just have to do with the fact that the nuclear pore complex is part of the membrane and kind of breaks up and distributes in the membrane and does not fall off entirely from the membrane right okay so thank you okay uh vaishnavi your query sir in one of the first slides uh, where we looked at how the mi uh, microtubules arrange during the metaphase mm -hmm. uh, i saw two microtubules from uh, two both the uh, centrosomes attached to each other mm -hmm. why was that so this kind of um, attachment happens uh, you know there are many such interactions that happen in in the opening up of the two mitotic spindles remember there are strands of microtubules that are connected to them right uh, it's not like they are completely the centrosomes are uh, free floating because there are microtubules here and and there are microtubules here and they they actually are connected um, and so along with microtubules that are pulling the centrosomes apart there are microtubules here that are growing that are pushing the centrosomes apart as well so microtubules you know as long as they have a way to communicate with each other and motor proteins are a, one of the ways they do it uh, you know they will have overlaps uh, in places um, just as the tip of the microtubules will bind to the um, uh, to the centrosome you know using a very elaborate me uh, mechanism um, you know this kind of overlap attached through maybe motor proteins uh, is also likely to take place and and that's happening because of how this all began right so um, and then once they are sufficiently apart you know the microtubules come apart the the center the uh, chromosomes are arranged and now that same tips have to go bind uh, the the centrosomes uh, sorry have to bind the um, centromeres uh, in the chromosomes per se right right okay sir vignesh your query sir so uh, at the start of the cell cycle you have an approximately uh, spherical uh, cell and at the end of the cell cycle you have two daughter cells that have half the volume and that are also approximately spherical so uh, i did some basic surface area volume calculation and at the end you have approximately 25% more surface area than you had at the beginning so uh, there are two explanations for this one is that there is a large increase in lipid generation during the uh, cell cycle uh, the mitosis that uh, that allows the surface area to expand by this much or the density fluctuates throughout the uh, mitosis that allows for this to happen so what is happening both probably happen right um, and go look up this um, review on lipids i will put it up um, and and both scenarios actually could be happening um and um and uh, you know there is a lot more lipid in the cell 
um, that now becomes available um, at the plasma membrane. So, for example, we didn't talk about this, but you know, later on in advanced uh, cell biology courses, you will probably read about it, where uh, there are um, uh, you know invaginations in the membrane, like um, caviolate-like structures, and and if you really pull on them, um, and the membrane has to expand, uh, these caviolate-like structures actually fall back. You know, they give their membrane to the plasma membrane. Um, so there is a way for um, membrane to be added to uh, to the to the cell membrane, um, and um, at, at the same time there could be other mechanisms that of synthesis that are also contributing to the amount of lipid that's uh, that's there in the in the cells. Um, the two daughter cells may not be as big as the parent cell per se to begin with, and and that's something to consider as well uh, when you think about this. Okay, sir. Uh, Anubhuti, your query? Uh, yes, sir. I had a doubt in mitochondria paper. Uh, in what? Sir, uh, mitochondria paper, okay. Huh. Yes, sir. Uh, so, uh, in that slide, it was given uh, that when we uh, break up because of uh, several protein and uh, all, uh, then they rejoin again. So, uh, why do they rejoin? See, for the functionality of the mitochondria in an active cell, which is not dividing, that architecture is, is uh, vital, right? So, um, so the mitochondria are not existing as elongated um, structures just for fun, right? So they, they, that architecture is vital to how they um, mediate their functions. So hence, a lot of time and effort and energy is put back in not only so when distribution and breakup has to happen those structures are not amenable to that kind of distribution so you chop them up and then distribute it and then you bring them back together to being the structure that they originally were right um sai chinmay has a query uh, how exactly are the organelles distributed among the cells is there equal div division or they just statistically get distributed stochastically is probably what you meant um, also are the microtubules involved in gathering all these organelles as well so a lot of this happens both of these happens where some of it is just stochastic distribution if you have these big you know uh, stirring of the, uh, by the actin, then that obviously ensures that everything is getting mixed nice and well before the division takes place. Some of it is um, probably also mediated by direct binding to microtubules. And Golgi, for example, uh, there is some speculation that there could be direct binding. Uh, so that also could be taking uh, place, uh, right? Um, Anand has a query, what does the term sumoylation of BRP1 mean? Sumoylation is a, is a modification uh, that happens on BRP1. Um, as a matter of fact, um, Girish's lab here at um, ICER studies sumoylation of proteins. Um, it's a modification that um, adds a certain residue, uh, which is called sumo, and hence the name sumoylation, um, that affects the functionality of those proteins uh, that are sumoylated, right? So DRP um, function is affected by sumoylation, and that's one of the changes that is taking place. Why is the kind of mitochondria being moved around in circles? Because it likes going around in circles, right? So um, I think the mitochondria are being moved around in circle because it's trying to distribute the mitochondria, right? Um, and make sure that they go, um, you know, they're evenly distributed throughout the cell. What is particularly interesting, and nobody asked me this at least up till now, is why does that movement happen in the anti-clockwise direction and not the clockwise direction? Right, because you know it moves in one direction. So does it happen the other way too? And if not, why? Right, it happens only in the anti-clockwise direction. You know, so go look up the paper and see what they have to say about why that is the case. Right, um, Abhinav has a query: Does every chromosome always get split properly? Actually, it doesn't. Right, sometimes that actually there can be mistakes, um, and um, you know, separation does not happen. Uh, you know, polyploidy kind of situations happen where um, an additional pair of chromosomes end up in a cell um, and the cells don't do fine and eventually um, you know in most cases uh, these cells are uh, gotten rid of but sometimes uh, you know they can be problematic as well right um, Vinu Kumar uh, you have a query I don't know how I should pronounce your first name 
sir gadha gadha okay go ahead gadha uh, sir my doubt was regarding the uh, actin comet tails helping mm-hmm. mitochondria mm-hmm. does that happen only during mitosis or do they also help in moving the mitochondria during yeah yeah very good mitosis? question very good question um so far they have been seen only during mitosis right um and that may have to do in part um uh, because of the fact that the architecture of the mitochondria is very different in non mitotic cells um and so they are not really trying to be moved around right and and so that might explain why this happens only during mitosis many of the mechanisms that required uh, that trigger uh, this formation of these tails um are also activated during mitosis which is probably one more reason uh, you know why um, you know these mitochondria in the mitosis mitotic state um only have these states uh, they are fragmented mitochondria and now they are you know being moved around as well right so that that's my short answer uh, goraksh your query uh, sir i didn't get the part where you said it is always anti clockwise like If we look at it from one side, it is anti-clockwise, but from the other side, it is clockwise, right? Like, yeah, so how do like, we determine? This is it? like saying, you know, it's moving in one direction as as you look at it. Like this is like saying, if you put a mirror in front of it, it's it's clockwise. Sure, when I am looking at it from, you know, you are looking at it on the screen, it moves in one direction, right? And it doesn't matter what that direction is. You can call that direction, you know, whatever you want, but there is movement in. Uh, of uh, the actin ring in one particular direction and not the other and that's the query um, you know what on earth lets the cell say this is the direction i'm going to move this in right um, and and clockwise anti clockwise is our terminology it doesn't really uh, matter okay a uh, couple of questions on chat uh Thyria has a query. Why does the cell try to go into a spherical structure before mitosis? Good question. What do you think? Um, you know, might be the reason. So, um, is that um, you know, when it comes to separation of two daughter cells, um, you know, having a, a rounded uh, cell uh, ensures that a lot of the um, you know heterogeneity that exists. See, when the cell is spread out. Uh, deciding where the central plane for division is uh, may not ne- may not be that easy to do right that's a lot more easier to do if the cell is rounded up right because you kind of have a sense uh, of where exactly that middle is going to be like this may also obviously the 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 finding of that middle is uh, determined by lipids for example that could be present and their distribution uh, is again uh, regulated differently when the cell is in this rounded confirmation um so to allow for this kind of separation to take place and um ensure as close as possible for even distribution of components because many of these components um uh, you know have some uh, you know active mechanisms but for the most part are using stochastic methods to be distributed so you want that separation to ensure that you know there is a 50 50 chance of things going this way or that way um, on okay. that uh in part mediated by the or facilitated by the fact that cells round up so there is a active mechanism to reduce the adhesion of the cells and allow them to round up before this happens okay uh, oh, thank you sorry you were saying something uh no i was just saying thank you okay um <clears throat> Gautam has a query: Are mid bodies formed in telophase permanent? If they aren't, then how do the microtubules and actin fibers within them get distributed? So there is a mechanism for everything, right? And um, as I said, I have not gone into the detail of many of these aspects simply because the scope of that is is just too much. Uh, how are the centrosomes uh, duplicated? again very detailed mechanism uh, is known about how this is taking place so there are mechanisms um, for these structures to break up uh, just as there are mechanisms for them to be brought together and assembled into very distinct architectures um, and and that mechanism you know when it comes to the golgi or the r we briefly touched upon how phosphorylation dephosphorylation of very specific proteins could do this um so if you're curious you know go back and read a little bit there is a lot of information on how many of these processes are regulated as well 
If the microtubules in Elan she has a query of the microtubules attached to the kinetochore after the chromosomes are arranged at the metaphase plate, how are the chromosomes arranged in the phase first place? Please go look this up. Okay. How is that architecture, you know, created? You know, I, I, I'm not discussing that here because that's really beyond the preview of this class. Uh, there is a lot of information on how this happens. Right, each and every step. I could teach an entire course on just cell cycle, right, and all the steps. So go look this up and let's see what you find out. Right. Last two questions, uh, Hirak, you go first. Sir, in continuation to Gorak's point that uh, if mitochondria move in anticlockwise uh, sense during a uh, cell cycle, mm -hmm. but uh, the cell could turn upside down and then the mitochondria would be moving in the no, other it doesn't matter it doesn't matter this is what i'm trying to tell you it moves in one direction this way now if you if you do lose the cell this way it is moving it is still doing the same direction right you know that it's re relative to the cell its position may have changed but it moves in one direction that's the point right so, so you can look at it this way, you can look at it this way and, and clockwise, anti-clockwise is our view of that, right? But um, effectively within the cell, that movement happens in a certain direction, right? And it's not like it goes one round this way and then goes another round that way, or it does five rounds this way and then goes back the other way. It does rounds in a certain direction and keeps doing rounds in that direction. And, and the question was, you know, why that could be happening at all. Okay. Go look this up. Go look this up. There is, I mean, they haven't, they don't have a clear explanation for this, but they have some suggestions on what could be the case. Vaishnavi, last query. Uh, sir, during the actin wave, does it move around only the mitochondria or other mm -hmm. uh, organs also? So, so the mitochondria have active tail like structures that allow it to be moved. But the pieces, um, you know, the fact that you can see this big wave of actin that is going through suggests that other structures, which are pieces that are floating around, will obviously be moved around because the site, there is a cytosolic current that is created effectively, right? Um, and so that will ensure that um, a lot of the other broken up structures are also distributed in the cell, right? So, so this could have implications for other uh, structures in the cell and the way they are distributed also. Okay. Oh. So, yeah. So mitochondria could be the place where this was discovered, uh, but it probably have imp has implications for, uh, you know, other um, cellular components being distributed as well. Okay. 